Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here in Mumbai today to treat you uh, to, to truly unique experience. Tonight, you will become the very first audience to see the new film about South Asia, a part of the documentary series Wild Edens. From dense forests to remote deserts along wild mountain ranges to the mighty river Ganges, you will see the amazing nature of India with your own eyes. Dear friends, we live in the time of a worldwide crisis, and this crisis is a global warming. Climate change is here, and we should address the issue urgently. Droughts, forest fires, floods, melting glaciers, loss of entire unique ecosystems. These are the things global warming has in store for us. I know for a fact that uh, I don't have to convince you that our predicament is deadly serious. Here in India, climate change hit particularly close to home since 2080. Will forever go down in history as a year of the most devastating flood of the last 100 years. We in Russian nuclear corporation Rosatom, the world leader in generating low carbon energy, initiated the Wild Eden's communication project fulfilling our responsibility for the preservation of our common home. The Wild Eden's documentaries highlight how fragile our planet is and how important it is for us to join forces in saving it. We seek to remind people around the world that we desperately need to transition to low emission development. We want to stress that the planet may be left unrecognizable unless they reduce carbon footprint. For over 70 years, Rosatom State Corporation has been working on providing future generations with a green and reliable source of energy. In 2017 alone, our nuclear power plants prevented emission of 584 million tons of CO2. Is it a lot? I can tell you that this is a tenth of the exhaust gases produced by all cars on the planet. Nuclear power is essential for cutting CO2 emissions and achieving the objectives of Paris Climate Agreement. It also contributes to sustainable development which is necessary for the preservation of flora and fauna. Along with our international partners, we take responsibility for resolving global environmental challenges and call upon the world community to wake up and do the right things. As Mahatma Gandhi once famously said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Russia and India have a special relationship, and the field of nuclear cooperation is not an exception. It's a great honor for us to be a partner of India in the implementation of such large-scale international project as the Kudankulam nuclear power plant. Having made a choice to build the station, India chose to preserve its unique nature. Since nuclear generation is essentially CO2 emission free, the Kudankulam supplies 4,000 states with clean energy. Rosatom not just does not pollute the environment, but goes even further. For example, prior to the start of the Kudankulam's construction, we planted trees in the area of expanded the nearby pond. As a result, birds returned to the previously dehydrated area, including the rare grey pelicans. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you will get pleasure from the watching the movie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ira, and thank you for all that you do in spreading the word on climate change as well. We do need a lot of young Indians to come forward. Um, okay, so for those of us who grew up in the late 80s and the poor kid, I think, might want to go out. Please take her out. Oh, poor oh, girl. Girl? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so for those of us who grew up in India in the late 
80s and 90s um, era you as well, I think we may all remember how special our Sundays were. Now I particularly remember um, going home right after Sunday school with my friends because I wanted to catch the latest episode of the Hindi anime series of Mowgli, The Jungle Book. Now, in, while we were watching this series, kids, parents, all of us, we were all rooting for Mowgli. Why? Because Mowgli was fighting for his place with the wolves, and Mowgli was also fighting to save the jungle from hunters and poachers. Basically, we were all rooting for him because it felt so intimate and personal. So, what happened exactly to all of us as we became adults? Now, undoubtedly, our responsibilities changed and they skyrocketed. But we still haven't identified as one particular responsibility as truly ours. We have, in a way, grown so distant from that childlike ability to connect with everything as our equal, as one of us. And the biggest of all disconnects is, sadly, Mother Nature. So in December 2018, just a few months ago, I visited Agra and New Delhi for a reconnection trip with my home country, India. While this trip was filled with nostalgia and undeniable hospitality, generosity, and possibly the best culinary experience, the one thing that was quite hard to ignore was the air I was breathing. On one little trip to Changni Chok in New Delhi, my cycle rickshaw driver told me that his lungs were so badly impacted from the polluted winter air that it had cut down his productivity to earn by half. And it was not only affecting his well-being and his health, but also his family's ability to eat three square meals a day. The dangers of global warming in India are grave. Floods, as we've seen, record-breaking heat waves killing thousands in each of the last two summers, and we are getting ready for the next summer. Drought has damaged crops, causing starvation and a rash of farmer suicides. As global temperatures continue to rise, hot weather countries like India feel the limits of habitability being stretched. But another integral part of our planet is also being affected by climate change. In India and Bangladesh, many of our rare and unique wildlife and plant species have come under the threat of extinction. Now, we may not immediately relate to this as being important and may not understand the need for protection and preservation, but if we did fully understand the impact of these fast-moving changes, we would want to do something about it right now. From the shrinking habitat of the Bengal tiger to increased water scarcity, driving human-wildlife conflict, these changes will become more pronounced in the years to come. So I've been learning a lot about this human-wildlife biodiversity connection in my role as Ambassador for Wild Edens. And as I keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into my research, the one thing that keeps coming up time and again as one of the biggest solutions is clean and green energy, lowering carbon emissions and reducing carbon footprint. So luckily, Rosatom understands this, and they are fighting the good fight to reverse the damaging effects of global warming. And therefore, I sincerely want to thank them, and I want to thank National Geographic for this wonderful gift that is Wild Edens. To this well-made documentary, The World and My Fellow Indians, will be able to connect with my country's exotic mix of wild nature, rare animal life, unique wildlife sanctuaries, and magnificent landscapes that are mesmerizing, but are also under the threat of extinction. The many wonderful creatures that you will be introduced into this film, and I had such a joyful time actually recording the voiceover for this because I kind of felt like, you know, I get to tell these stories and now you get to hear the stories. But I promise you, you're going to fall in love with them. You're going to be rooting for them. You're going to be won over by their beauty, their resilience, their survival instincts, and also their vulnerability. 
So going back to the Jungle Book, I recently had um, an opportunity to honor my childhood memory of being such a die-hard lover of that tale by playing a part in the recent film Mowgli. As I was doing the press rounds and as I had come into my own awareness of the ills of climate change, a thought crossed my mind. What if there came a day that I had to tell my grandchildren that the only way they will ever know who Sher Khan truly is, is through an image in the storybooks or the brilliantly engineered motion capture version in my film. Well, that would be a terrible day. So I truly hope that day never comes because we would have horribly failed the future generations. I believe that the human spirit has the ability to wake up and take action to reverse these ills. Rosatom, Nat Geo, and Wild Edens have all joined the fight and are making these solutions and the awareness attainable and desirable. So let's not give in to despondency or ignorance anymore. Let's do Mother Earth a real solid for all the amazing things that she's been generously giving us for years. Let's join the fight and let's win. Thank you so much. Enjoy the film. Thank you.